Gabrielle Brittany Ujlaki was a 16-year-old cowgirl who loved horses and dreamed of becoming a rodeo queen. She was a cheerful, outgoing, and kind-hearted teenager who had many friends and admirers in her rural Nevada town of Spring Creek. She was also a victim of a brutal murder that shocked and saddened her community. On March 8, 2020, Brittany vanished after leaving her father's band rehearsal. She was last seen getting into a green Ford F-150 pickup truck with a tall man wearing a cowboy hat. Her family and friends reported her missing and launched a massive search effort, hoping to find her alive and well. Five days later, their worst fears were confirmed. Brittany's body was found wrapped in a tarp in a remote area called Burner Basin, about 15 miles northwest of Spring Creek. She had been raped, strangled, and stabbed in the throat so deeply that it cut her carotid artery in half. She was partially clothed and had defensive wounds on her hands and arms. The shocking discovery of Brittany's body sparked a homicide investigation that led to the arrest of an unlikely suspect, Bryce Dickey, an 18-year-old friend of Brittany who had known her since elementary school. Dickey was also a fellow cowboy who competed with Brittany in the local rodeo circuit. He had attended a public memorial for Brittany before his arrest and even hugged her grieving mother. How did this friendship turn into a fatal betrayal? What motivated Dickey to commit such a heinous crime against someone he claimed to care about? And how did the authorities catch him and bring him to justice? In this article, we will explore the tragic case of Gabrielle Brittany Ulaki, the evidence that exposed her killer and the impact of her death on her family, friends, and community. Brittany and Dickey had been friends for years. They met when they were in elementary school and bonded over their shared passion for horses and rodeo. They often rode together at the Elko County Fairgrounds, where they practiced barrel racing, pole bending, goat tying, and other rodeo events. According to Brittany's mother, Alicia Ujlaki, Brittany considered Dickey a big brother figure who looked out for her and protected her from bullies. She said that Dickey was always respectful and polite to her daughter and never gave her any reason to worry about their friendship. However, according to some of Brittany's friends, Dickey had romantic feelings for Brittany that were not reciprocated by her. They said that Dickey had confessed his love for Brittany several times, but she always rejected him and told him that they were better off as friends. They also said that Dickey was jealous of Brittany's boyfriend, who was away at boot camp at the time of her disappearance. Dickey's jealousy may have been one of the factors that drove him to commit the unthinkable act of violence against Brittany. According to the prosecution, Dickey lured Brittany into his truck on March 8th under the pretext of taking her to see her boyfriend's family. He then drove her to a secluded spot in Burner Basin, where he sexually assaulted and killed her. Dickey initially told the police that he had dropped off Brittany at the Maverick gas station in Spring Creek after picking her up from her father's band rehearsal. He said that he saw her get into another truck with an unknown man wearing a cowboy hat. He described the truck as a green Ford F-150 with a white stripe on the side. However, this story turned out to be a fabrication. The police reviewed the surveillance footage from the gas station and did not see any sign of Brittany or the truck that Dickey described. They also interviewed several witnesses who saw Brittany leave with Dickey from the band rehearsal location. What's your Chevy? Uh, it's a 93 Silverado. The police then searched Dickey's truck and found traces of blood on the passenger seat, floorboard, door handle, and steering wheel. They also found blood on a pair of boots in Dickey's closet. The blood matched Brittany's DNA profile. Dickey pleaded not guilty to the charges and went to trial in May 2022. His defense team argued that he had consensual sex with Brittany and that he did not intend to kill her. They claimed that he accidentally cut her throat while trying to remove a necklace that she was wearing. They also suggested that someone else may have killed Brittany after Dickey left her at the gas station. The prosecution, however, presented a strong case against Dickey, based on the physical and circumstantial evidence. They also called several witnesses who testified about Dickey's unrequited love for Brittany, his jealousy of her boyfriend, and his inconsistent and suspicious behavior after her disappearance. The jury deliberated for about four hours before reaching a verdict. They found Dickey guilty of both charges on May 20th, 2022. On May 24th, 2022, they sentenced him to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 20 years for the murder charge. They have yet to decide on the sentence for the sexual assault charge. Brittany's death left a deep wound in the hearts of her family, friends, and community. She was remembered as a bright, beautiful, and talented young woman who had a promising future ahead of her. She had big plans for her life, 
such as joining the Navy, becoming a special effects makeup artist, and competing for the title of Rodeo Queen. Her mother, Alicia Ujlaki, said that she was devastated by the loss of her daughter and the betrayal of Dickie, whom she had trusted as a friend. He started to cry, and I hugged him, and I said, it's okay, Bryce, you're a good kid. She said that she was disappointed by the jury's decision to give Dickie a chance at parole, and that she hoped he would never get out of prison. She also said that she wanted to honor Brittany's legacy by raising awareness about sexual assault and violence against women. She said that she wanted to help other victims and survivors find justice and healing. Brittany's father, James Ujlaki, said that he missed his daughter every day and that he wished he could have protected her from harm. He said that he was proud of Brittany's accomplishments and aspirations and that he hoped she would inspire others to follow their dreams. Brittany's friends, Cheyenne Fry and Saquara Ashby, said that they cherished their memories with Brittany and that they tried to keep her spirit alive by continuing to ride horses and participate in rodeo events. They said that Brittany was always supportive, encouraging, and fun-loving, and that they would never forget her smile and laughter. Brittany's boyfriend, Cody Patton, said that he loved Brittany with all his heart and that he regretted not being able to say goodbye to her. He said that he was grateful for the time they spent together and that he hoped to see her again someday. The case of Gabrielle Brittany Ujlaki is a tragic example of how a friendship can turn into a nightmare. It is also a reminder of how precious life is and how important it is to cherish our loved ones. Brittany may be gone, but she will never be forgotten by those who knew and loved her. Thank you for joining us on this emotional journey through the tragic death of Gabrielle Brittany Ujlaki. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with others. We'll keep you updated on any further developments in this case, so make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Let us know in the comments below if there are any other stories you'd like us to cover. Until next time, take care and remember, every story has the power to make a difference. Stay vigilant and compassionate.